even if it, in its standard direct impingement configuration, which um, is kind of debatable because inside the carrier here is actually a piston. So like the bolt itself is the back of it is a piston. So it's kind of a piston system. <laughs> so first of all, let's go over the process of what actually happens when you pull the trigger and a round you know, goes out the barrel. Typically you'd, you'd um, have the bolt carrier in the rearward position. You'd insert a new magazine, like, like let's say like you ran out of ammo, and then you could either engage the bolt catch, which is right here, or the ping pong paddle as it's referred to. You can smack it, or you can uh, press it with your thumb, you know, different ways to skin a cat. At that point, the bolt carrier strips a round from the magazine, chambering it. The hammer is in this position, ready to be disengaged or released by the trigger. So you pull the trigger, this goes forward. It then makes contact with the firing pin, which is housed inside of the bolt carrier group. So when that hammer goes forward and strikes the firing pin, what happens, the firing pin will then strike the primer of the round. This is the primer. So th this is inside the chamber, right? The extractor's holding on to the rim of the case. So now picture this in the gun like this. The firing pin strikes the primer. The primer ignites the gunpowder in the case, making so much pressure that the bullet is forced to be unseated from the case, and then forced down the barrel, which is the path of least resistance. So when it's going down the barrel, it reaches a point where there's a hole drilled in the barrel itself. And right here is the gas block. And sometimes they're in different positions. They could be further up. Um, there are different length gas tubes. Once the projectile goes past that gas port, the extra gases behind the bullet get forced into the gas block, which then diverts it to the gas tube. You can kind of see it right there. That gas tube comes all the way into the upper receiver, and you can see it right there, that right thing right there. And that gas gets diverted actually into the gas key. This is the gas key. And there's a hole through this that comes down and then back into the carrier. So as soon as it gets to here, there's an expansion chamber, a gas expansion chamber. I'll show you that right now. Pop the firing pin out. So picture this in the in the carrier itself, right? This is kind of like a piston on a car. So be, behind here, uh, this is where all the gas gets trapped or diverted. And then these two holes right here are actually ports for excess gas, right? So that's what, why you see in slow motion, like uh, there's like vapor or gas that comes out of these holes. That's extra gas that the carrier doesn't actually need to build up uh, to, to cycle the action. So, so it's like this, and then in this forwardmost position, it's locked into the, the chamber here, which is called the barrel extension. So as you can see right there, there are little uh, grooves milled out of the barrel extension itself. The little two on the bottom are, are actually feed ramps. When this is locked in to the extension here, right, the bolt actually turns. So let's say this is still in the carrier, pretend this is in the carrier. You can see that this actually turns once it gets past the initial grooves that, that, are, that are milled out. Once it gets to a point to where there's enough pressure built up in the system, it will push the carrier back, and because of the cam, this is the cam, it's placed right here, you can see there's a, a, a twisting motion. So when it's like this, this is an unlocked position, and like this, it actually turns and locks itself into the barrel extension. So once enough pressure is built up in the system, it unlocks and then pushes the carrier back. This right here, as you can see, interfaces with the hammer. After the, the round has gone off and built up enough pressure to push the carrier back again, it pushes it back. And this whole thing, see how that, that, that just reset the hammer. This whole thing goes back into the receiver extension, or otherwise known as the buffer tube, right? And then the whole, whole system starts over again. So that's how it works. So now let's go over individual parts and show you little ins and outs that you may not know about your gun. So first of all, you'll notice that there are little rings, three little rings, and that's for more than one function. One obviously is to build up enough um, gases behind it so it, it seals the system more so 
than if it was just a, a solid part. So it has the ability to be a little bit larger than the bolt itself to, to seal those gases behind the expansion chamber here, this little bell portion, or little trumpet portion, if you'd call it that. It traps the gases, and that's why a lot of people are so worried about when there's a, a gap in your rings here. And I actually have a Mythbuster series on just that, and I'll actually include all the links uh, in the description box for those if you're interested. So that's one of the purposes. Another is to actually scrape the carbon from inside of the carrier. Another thing people don't really know about the carrier itself does not actually make contact with as many places as you think it does. So when it's in, inside of the upper receiver, just put the carrier in, you can see that it's kind of loose in there, especially towards the back. So, but when you get towards the front, you'll notice that it's a lot tighter. And that's because the carrier itself does not actually travel along you know the entire surface of the carrier itself it just travels on these four rails but a lot of people don't know that so like when they lubricate their their carrier they'll lubricate like all these parts and you can do that it's not going to hurt anything the lube will spread itself around accordingly but all you really need to address are these rails here and then pretty much anywhere you just see like your, your gun wearing so and i call that letting your gun speak to you but a lot of people don't know why their buffer makes noise. Why are there little weights in there? This is actually to control what's called bolt bounce. Because those weights are kind of free floating in there, they actually bounce into each other and reduce the amount of bounce the bolt experiences when it comes to an end here. If you're a new shooter, this might be for you. Um, a lot of experienced shooters will know this and it's kind of like one of the first upgrades a lot of people do. And there's a lot of different types of muzzle attachments. There's flash hiders, compensators, muzzle brakes, thread protectors, suppressors. But the one that comes standard on most AR-15s is called a birdcage flash hider. But what this does is it actually reduces your, your muzzle flash because a lot of people go with shorter barrel lengths. This is a 16 inch barrel. The original AR was actually designed with a 20 inch barrel. When you get the barrel shorter, there's more unburnt powder that escapes the barrel. And that unburnt powder turns into like a big old muzzle flash, like a, like a small explosion at the end of your barrel. So something you also notice is there's only holes on one side. This is the bottom. So if timed correctly, all the gases that are escaping are esca escaping towards the top, which uh, in turn pushes down on your rifle, decreasing muzzle rise. So that's the, the concept behind this is to not only decrease muzzle rise, but get rid of that flash. Another thing that a lot of people don't know, if you take a look at this inside the upper here, there's a little sort of half moon kind of cut out. And that's actually where your cam pin resides. If you were to have like an x-ray portion, this little hump right here is actually where your cam pin is. And your cam pin also does make contact with part of your receiver. That's why you'll see like a little bit of wear right here on the side of the cam pin. There's corresponding wear inside your upper right in front of the cam pin area there's a lot of wear actually right there and that's why a lot of people will install a roller bearing as opposed to just a straight up piece of solid steel they'll install like a roller bearing right here so it has less friction inside of your upper on uh, certain carriers there are these grooves channeled out here and a lot of people may not know this because you know depending on what kind of upper you choose you may not have a forward assist. A lot of people think forward assists are, are, are not necessary to the function of a, an AR-15, but the forward assist is basically a workaround. If the, sprint, the action spring itself can't seat the bullet, you can't apply enough force with your bare hand, like your finger, to, to get something seated. So it's, it's ridiculous when someone says, um, well, you can just push it forward with your thumb. You know, if it, if it didn't go forward with all that, that spring pressure and all that mass going forward, why would it go forward with your thumb? The forward assist actually just kind of like a little claw, and it, it literally locks into these grooves here to inch inch your uh, your carrier forward. So if there's a bunch of dirt in your chamber and it was like locked back to here, it can actually still go forward, 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 forward until you get all the way back. Like let's say your receiver is so dirty, it can help you work past a malfunction is, is what it's for. And I've, I've had malfunctions in the past. Um, where I literally have to, have to like bang this with my 
the front of, uh, with the palm of my hand or push with all my body weight forward on the forward assist. So it is actually useful. So when people say it serves no purpose, that's because they're only running factory ammunition. I do recommend getting a forward assist model upper receiver. So another thing a lot of people sort of ignore or just don't know about is fencing. And also on the uh, magazine catch area, on the original version, this fencing didn't exist. This fencing, I believe, did. But that actually was a problem because this, this button could be depressed relatively easy against gear or on the ground. So this fencing is actually to protect this button here. And visually, you can tell that's what it's for, but some people just may not actually realize what this is and, uh, and why it's there. Same with here. So this makes it to where even if something is up against your magazine latch area, you can still actuate the release. Like let's say my thumb is the ground, you know, or, or a wall. Still will allow this to, to actuate. So without this, if something was up, up against your receiver, you know, you, you can't actually release the magazine. So another thing that people don't know about, this is more uh, leaned towards users that have never like built a rifle or done their own maintenance, but uh, typically inside the hammer, there's a spring that uh, engages the middle, a middle groove on the, the hammer pins here. But uh, on the trigger pins, the, the arms from the, the spring that the hammer works off of actually locked in to these grooves here holds it in place and makes it to where this can't be pushed out just uh, with vibration alone. So I hope you guys enjoyed this look at how an AR-15 works and, and little, little parts of the system that you may not have known about. Please share this video and then, you know, let people know. Have a good day. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in a future video.